Hello everybody and welcome back to Coombe Valley Campers. Today, something slightly different. We're going to be working on my own personal van, Bully. Now, you may have seen this on the channel or on our social medias before. We've actually got a whole video dedicated to him uh, that we shot maybe two years ago, three years ago, something like that. This is definitely pre-lockdown. My daily driver, my family camper, my work vehicle, tip run car, everything. I drive this everywhere. We've done lots of work on him recently that we haven't filmed. We've raised the suspension, put some wheels and tires on, some of the uh, mirrors from camper van culture, and generally just got out and enjoyed the van. But now the weather's getting hotter and it's set to be a hot summer and we look to be getting hotter summers, we can find that the inside of the van can get quite stuffy, either whilst you're driving or uh, whilst you're camping overnight. And however nice it is to have factory sliding windows. This was a Caravelle van before. Um, I actually lost one of the uh, sliding windows on the other side when I uh, changed the sliding door. So we've got a new window to go right here and it's a brand new window from Heritage Park Centre which is a sliding window for the rear. Awesome piece of kit but as an added bonus they've got a vent window attachment in there as well so you can keep the window open at night still have some sort of security and it's a fly screen as well that is the replacement part but the main aim of this video is really to show you how to remove a factory style window i've shown you before in a previous video which you can probably see right here if i've put the card up correctly how to install windows with a H pattern rubber. Now that is the sort of rubber which has got the infill all the way around the outside. The windows we'll be dealing with today are factory style rubbers and you can use this information to remove windows from all manner of cars, be it Type 25s, be it bays, Beetles. It's the same method you use to replace a windscreen on some of the older cars. So it should be a really nice informative video uh, on how to remove and refit a factory style window with a factory style rubbers. And as an added bonus, we'll be putting a brand new window from Heritage Park Centre in too. Just want to say a quick thank you to Heritage Park Centre for supporting us on this video. And if you like the products you see today or any of the products on the heritageparkcentre.com website, then you can use the code COOMVALLEY10 to get yourself a 10% discount. The actual process of removing the window then is fairly simple. Just need a pair of flat bladed screwdrivers. In this case, and we've already done a little bit of a test run, this rubber is quite old and quite stiff and quite brittle. Um, I could just cut out the window rubber, make my life a lot easier. However, I want to show you this process. So an old flat blunt screwdriver, so you don't damage either the metalwork or the rubber is key. And what our aim is, is to prise this rubber around the lip within the window frame. And that's how these windows are attached in. You've got a large rubber, it's got a recess in here and that fits around the metal lip of the rubber. Little precursor, it is real hot today. So if I turn into a sweaty mess, I do apologize, but we're in a confined space in the sun. Let's just crack on with it, shall we? So I'm gonna be using these screwdrivers here, if you can just see that, to bring this rubber back as far as I can and then tuck it behind the metal lip. It may become more apparent, but if I can just prise that in there, and this might take a bit of, a bit of effort to start, because like I say, this rubber is fairly stiff. But I've got one in there, and if I can get the other one round, at least we can get that started. Once you've got the first bit in, and over the lip, the process is a little easier. So there we go, that's actually started there. So now, I just need to continue that all the way up and round. And this is where using those big screwdrivers is key, because it's quite easy to tear up the rubber, especially if the rubber's fairly new. You know, rubbers aren't cheap and you don't want to be you don't want to be wrecking a brand new rubber. So once it's over the lip, I'm then actually pushing the rubber behind that as well to make sure it's seated in there. You can see that. And then I'll just work my way up for a little bit towards the corner. And then I'll work down to the other corner. Now what I've heard in the past is that you can just push these rubbers out. And you can in some instances 
but I can tell you from experience, you're probably gonna end up breaking your glass before the rubber gives way. Now I think what we'll do straight away, so I don't have to sweat in front of the camera, is either set up a bit of B-roll or set up a bit of time-lapse, and I'm gonna work my way up around and towards each corner. And then once it's at a point, I may be able to start pushing and prizing that rubber. And once you've got to that point, I'll come back and do some, do some more explaining. So in the belly of the beast now, fortunately, I can get through to the backs of these cupboards, maybe foresight when I built this thing back in 20, gosh, 2011. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna enable me to reach the inside of the window. So now I can continue, continue the rubber here. With a bit of luck, if I can just get round this edge. And it'll be super handy when we come to put the window in as well, actually, so. I can just continue this method of pushing the rubber in and under. Now, sadly, another thing you may have been able to pick up on the microphone is that the frames of this window are a touch crusty. Now, that is something I'm going to address, not today, because I want to put the window in. But what we'll do, we'll clean up the area, put some Q-Rust on it or something like that, just to give it another six months of life. And then we'll be taking these windows out another day because I want to do all the body work on this car. But yeah, not today. So yeah, we shall uh, continue to do this rubber. And what I've decided to do is push the rubber out all the way along the side and all the way along the top. So when I get, bearing when I'm on my own, when I'm outside, I'll be able to grab it and slide it out from the bottom because it is that bottom lip that is the one that's most corroded. It kills me to know that that's corroded that bad and that I'm not doing anything about it today. However, you know, needs must and all that. And uh, bearing in mind the heat of today and the summer coming up, all the added ventilation is gonna be absolutely key. So I think once I've done all of this, I'll bring you back. And I think before the window comes out, I'm gonna maybe talk through a couple of those stickers on the outside because they've got a bit bit of story behind them. So we're nearly at the end of the areas I'm going to be pushing in anyway. So we started off around this other side, we've gone all the way along the top and we've got what three four inches now down to the bottom and if you've been noticing what we've been up to I've been moving along I mean, it's a bit of a process, but moving along five, 10 mil at a time. And then once I've done about an inch, I'm sort of going back along the length of the rubber. And then I'll go back up here and then I'll just continue to push that rubber out into the frame. Cause not only is that moving the rubber out of the way for what we need to do on the next stage, but it's the extra thickness between the metal and the glass is actually helping push out the window at the same time or the window glass at the same time. So yeah, nearly there. I think to make it easier on a day like today, it doesn't make it any easier with a cupboard in the way, but as you can see, it is possible and it's possible on your own. However, if it's your first time doing it, grab a friend. So as you can tell, this rubber is looking wildly different to what it did before although it's not pushed out all the way. So what I'm gonna do now, got my little bottle of soapy water here. I'm gonna see if I can get some lube down in that edge. Let that work in there. And then hopefully that'll assist it in coming out. Come on. Yeah, last time I took this window out, was, yeah, 2011, I think, when I painted this. 
when I bought this van in 2009, it was red and white. Then I painted it with Rust-Oleum for about 200 quid. And it's been the same ever since, really. Um, yeah. So a bit of backstory on these then. Most of these stickers were from our travels on our honeymoon and other places since. So Furstenfeld was the town where there is a biannual VW only show, which we managed to catch on our honeymoon. Took this round Monaco. Um, I don't quite know why we've got the Madrid one there. We didn't go to Madrid. But yeah, certainly Italy and yeah, lots of different places. Camping Santa Monica, Barcelona, Stadlerhof camping, and it's got some of our cams and coffee stickers on there as well. Sad that we're gonna lose it. We'll frame it somewhere, but it just gives us another opportunity to fill up with more travel stickers. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pushing the window from the inside. So in fact, Al, I think if you stay here, I'll start pushing from the inside. If it starts falling out, catch it. If not, I'll put a bit more lube around and we'll go from there. I'm not looking forward to this bottom edge because as I was getting around to these corners, I can feel it was a bit crispy. And as you can tell, there's a gaping hole there. I'd love to be able to sort the rust out now. But let's just get the window in today. Right, so very gently, there you go. Start feeling that window go. Ali, I can see, is holding his hands out just in case he needs to catch it. But there we go. I can see some light through there as well. Good, I think I'm gonna come back outside now to you. And hopefully you're gonna remove the window and reveal the horrors as well, sadly. There we go. I think that lube actually might have worked. Not ready for this. Here we go. Uh, it's bad. Oh, it's real bad. And there we go. Glass out. First time that's been like that for a while. But it's just a bit of a shame, really. Um, like I say, today I'm just going to clean it up, put some Q rust on there, I think. Ignore it for a little while. Yeah, pop the new window in. Just forget about it, forget about it. But that's how you take the glass out. So as you saw, I pushed out from the top, prized it, and then I was able to lift it off of that bottom lip. So, wire brush, I think. It's not the worst I've seen. It needs sorting. Not gonna be today, it'll be another day. Um, and a lot of people think it'll be sacrilege, but in reality, a job like this can stop your summer. If you wanted to take this straight to the body shop and go, I need to get this done, you know, a body shop might have a lead time and then your, your van might be out of action all summer. I just want to get out and use this. This is what this summer's all about. I want to get out and use it. Bit of added comfort. So let's go. And that's as much as I'm gonna do. Like I say, if I was to get right into that, I could lose days, weeks. I'd then want it painted, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, we are gonna do all the body work on this. Don't quite know when yet, but this is our life van. This is the one we're gonna keep. Let's do the body work another day. A lot of you may have heard of this. This is Hammerite Q-Rust. It's, um, it says it transforms rust to a stable surface in 15 minutes. Again, I'm not painting it. I'm not repairing the rust. So all we're gonna do is just dab on this little solution. Yeah, allegedly kills rust. Proofs in the pudding, I guess. So anywhere where I see some, some flaky, nasty stuff, at least that might keep it at bay, like I say, for another six months. And when it hits the rust, it turns black. And in this sunlight and in this heat, it should dry pretty quick. So we can smash on with getting that that window in. Next stage then is to fit our brand new window. Now the wonderful folks over at Heritage Parts Centre have supplied all the bits we need today. We have a rear quarter sliding window, we have a brand new rubber, and we have this which is exclusive to SSP, which is the brand 
of the window and heritage as well is this uh, vent window or fly screen cover for this vented window, should I say. Really innovative bit of kit. It slots inside the frame of the actual window itself and it's got a metal, metal grill on it and it enables you to basically have the window open and not have any midges or flies come in. But at the same time, if you wanted the windows open at night and you needed a little added uh, security, you can have the window open and this is a metal grill as well. And it's a really nice bit of kit. I'm very, very fortunate that I work with Heritage and they can help show off bits and pieces like this. And if you are interested in any of these products, I will leave all the part numbers and the links to all the parts down below in the video. And don't forget, if you use the code Coombelly10, you get 10% discount. First stage of putting your new window in then is grabbing your new rubber. Now, it is a case of fitting this groove or this edge into the groove of the rubber. You've got to make sure you get the rubber the right way around. This is already conveniently shaped. It's got this bend down here and it's got the join in the bottom center. I prefer to put them in the bottom center. Some people prefer to put them at the bottom top, but bottom center I prefer uh, in this application. And it's a case of really just opening up that groove and fitting the rubber on. It can be quite the task got to kind of wiggle it on there and it goes the same if you've just got a pane of glass or a metal framed piece of glass much like we've got here and it's just working your way around making sure it's all the way home now fresh rubbers nice and pliable however they can be a little bit tough so when it comes to fitting the glass in we will be using plenty of lubrication. I'm not putting lube on this bit because this is the part of the rubber I want to stay on. But when it comes to slotting it in the frame, you will see that we've got our bottle of spray lube. Well, I say spray lube, it's soapy water. Um, try and use a car cleaning product for soapy water. Try not to use fairy liquid or washing up liquid in a bottle because fairy liquid contains salt and salt with ferrous metals accelerates rust. So what I've actually got there, that's Valet Pro um, Pre-Clean. So just that in a soapy water bottle, or a spray bottle, sorry, is perfect for what we need. So that's the rubber on. Now we need the tool that'll help us pop it in the window. And for that, we're going to use this piece of string, which runs through what looks like a bent screwdriver. Now I've had this tool many years. It's actually shorter in terms of the string. It's actually shorter than what it was, because unfortunately I got a knot in it. And once you've got a knot in there, you can't pull it through. I just had to cut it off. Anyway, the string enables you to peel the rubber lip over that edge once the window sighted in place. To enable you to do that, you've got to feed it into the rubber itself. So the first thing I'm going to do, again, because it's a hot day and it's fresh rubber, I'm actually going to lube up this groove. And once the groove is lubed, I'll leave a little bit of a tail hanging out and it's the fattest of the ribs that you can see. So we've got two ribs nearest the outside piece of rubber and then this end groove see how deep that is that's where that tool is going and then you literally just run that through and that'll feed your string through but first let's give it a bit of spray now again bearing in mind it's like 28 29 30 degrees today we'll try our best to keep this lubed up but this will enable the string to uh, come out of the glass a bit easier. Again, it might all dry out, but you gotta do what you can, right? So onto this string then, I'm gonna have the tails about here. Generally, I pop them in the middle, but bearing in mind the middle of this window frame is gonna come out here. It's gonna be easier if I start pulling the string from about here. So I'm gonna start my tail about here. I'm gonna hold on, let me come around that side. 
I'm going to start the tail here and then I'm just going to feed that string in on the screwdriver like this. And then when I come to a corner, and you may or may not have seen this before, I was taught this a while ago, give yourself an extra loop at the corner. There's a couple of reasons why you do that, because some people like to start their window rubbers in the corners first, but also if your, if your string falls out of the rubber at the corner halfway through your process, it gives you a second go at it. So, a little tip for the top there. That's if you've got enough string to. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, um, you could use some decent quality rope. I wouldn't use string because you can snap it. Uh, some people choose to use electrical cable, but you need something strong enough and fat enough to A, pull out the rubber, and B, when you get to a point that the rubber gets sticky, a, a cable or a rope or wire that's too small can actually cut straight through the rubber. And then you've, you've wrecked your rubber then. You can still keep your rubber. Whoops, let's go back to that bit. You can still use the rubber, but you certainly don't want to tear it if you can help it. Right, so we've got a loop in each corner there. And there we go. Right, so we've got the string all the way around. We're looped in the corners. A bit useless at the moment, bearing in mind the heat and the sun. But we'll try and lube that up. And we're going to lube the frame up as well, because you want that as lubed up as possible. Now, I'm going to try and do this on my own. However, we may have to put Ali on a tripod or the camera on a tripod and Ali may have to at least just hold the window in for me or pull the string, we'll see. Right, so what we're gonna do then, I'll do it on camera first. So you wanna keep hold of your, your strings or your tassels, your tails hanging out. You wanna sit the window with your tails inside in the frame, like so. Now, bearing in mind this is opening, I might actually be able to make a start. Oh, quick tip for the top. You're gonna to be banging the glass. So if you wear a ring or a wedding ring, yeah, keep it, keep it off your hand. So, you wanna try and locate the glass and the rubber. In the frame as best as possible. What I'm gonna do now, Ali, if you jump inside, then people can see what the process is like right here. So when you've put your frame in, you want to make sure it's all the way home. And when I say all the way home, what you want is the inner rubber touching the metal frame. And then we're gonna grab our string, pull it in an upwards motion, and that should, if all goes well, lift the rubber over this lip. Again, excuse the crusty lip at the bottom here. But if I lift this now, Being a bit of a pickle because it's sliding. Whoa. Here we go. Rubber started. And that is lifting over. There we go. Right. So you can see that start. That's gone over the lip. Give it a bang, it sits all the way down as well. So next I'm gonna try pulling on this lip, uh, this string. So that's coming over here nicely, but it's trying to lift the corner. So I'm gonna to go to the corner. Now it's pulling both out. So let's just hit this straight away. That's working a bit nicer for me now. Again, can be a little easier with two people. And you want to lift the string in the direction of the rubber. Come on, you. Let's 
So right now I'm banging the frame in so it sits home as much as possible. But it's a good start by getting that rubber over. So back onto the string. There we go. Probably making all sorts of faces, aren't I? Wow. Let's just get this rubber out a bit. Come on. Gosh, don't do it on a really hot day. Don't do it on a really hot day. So I've just got my big screwdriver that I used earlier to try and get it out. Just get that lip in the right orientation. There you go, it's better. So now I've got to struggle with this bit, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Now this bit's in, I'm pretty happy because that seems all the way home there. Not that I can see it, can you see it? What do you reckon? And now we'll continue the string this way. I'm gonna to have to get my man Ali to come out this side, maybe push on the glass whilst I'm pulling this, or vice versa, either Ali's pulling the string. Let's get you set up on a tripod. Right, so if you could open that door, what I'm gonna do is pull on this top string first, and then you take it over through this gap. So could you watch what this is doing here Maybe spray a little bit of lube just right up in here. That's it. And then if I pull on the string, I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down yeah. You see how that's doing that? And then what you can see on the camera, you might notice this sort of sucks in to the frame. So if I pull down on that, I'm going to transfer it over to you in there. If I give you the rest, <laughs> it's not going to work, is it? It's all right, that's fine. So you're going to need to pull pretty hard and then you're watching out for this rubber. Go on in, give it a... I might be able to assist you there. Pulling. Pulling, yeah. It's going to be a big pull. Go on, Sam. Go on. There we go. Nice. Nice. Keep going with that. Go on, Ali. You can do it. <laughs> Should we swap real quick? As long as this window's going, not, going. you got it. There she goes. Yes. Yes. So I want to get in there and help. That's it. Well done. Yeah, so go around the back. Try and pull downwards as much as you can. Yes. Right, now as you come around to the corner, start pulling in that, yeah, yeah. Like, so against the glass as much as possible because you're trying to pull the rubber down. That's it. Right, I'm gonna get in there. Yeah. But that's good. If you come in here, I just need you to just push on this bit as much as possible here. So whole palm, whole body weight. I just need that corner to stay in there like that. Okay, cool. Oh, no, it's slipping. Right, so I see where you were at. So I'm gonna now go on this bit here. See if I can pull this scabby bit up. I think that's going. I can't really see it. Oh yeah, we're going. Right, I'm gonna just give her a clout. Definitely a new rubber. There she goes. Oh, come on. Doesn't like that rusty bit much. So you, all you at home, I recommend you get the rubbers done first. So what I'm trying to do here is actually push the rubber into the aperture. 
better when I come to pull the string. It's a bit easier. And now it's in its frame. It's a bit easier to do that. Right, if you could put a bit of pressure on there, Al, that'd be wicked. You sure how this would have been easier? Taking the cupboard out. Taking the cupboard out. Made life way harder for ourselves. So I think I'm going to leave that cupboard out. Oh, go on. That is really tight. There she goes. Bit of lube. That's all you needed. Ready? Three, two, one. Yes. Wow. Right, so as you can see, that's still sitting out there. So now what I've got to do is seat the frame in. You can see it's seated really nicely all the way around. It's just this last corner. It just so happens it's where it was most crusty, but if I can either shove it or bang it in, out. Maybe even persuade her in a little bit with that tool. Big, flat, blunt screwdriver. Now I have made a right meal of this. Decided to do it outside on my own on a day like today. It's lovely to have Ali, but Ali's never done this before. And uh, if you can try and do it with a couple of people, then that's even better news. Last bit. I can get on the inside, see if I can pull some of that lip over. What you didn't see on the inside was that as we pulled the string over this lip, actually completely deteriorated. Which is why it's not sitting properly. But like I said, it's my van. I wouldn't do this to a customer's van. And I've showing you here how to fit the window rubber. And generally that goes way better than that. But the process was there. It was installing the rubber around the window frame. It was putting the string around the lip. It was putting the loops in the corners if necessary, lubing the frame, popping the frame in, and then with two people ideally, you've got somebody pulling and then somebody hitting the frame all the way in. Now, 99.9% .9 of that looks banging. But we've got the cupboard in the way, we've got a rusty window frame, and I'm making excuses. However, that is how the process is done. I'm very happy, actually, with how it fits in, bearing in mind the situation we've got on that bottom lip. Let's go and concentrate on that window net and show you how to put it in. So the last piece of this puzzle then is the fly screen. And a very nice piece it is too. It's got a lip on this top edge that's designed to slot into the top of this window. It's got the rubber seal down this edge. And a part you have to fit is this window felt. And that goes just down that edge there. And that is the last point in which flies could probably, or flies or midges, could enter your van. So if I take that piece off there, I'm gonna add it right to that corner. Just trim off that edge. So now we have the screen, we need to put it in. And just as a point to note, we've got two little brackets and two little screws. I've already taken the liberty of getting an Allen key, appropriately sized for these screws. I couldn't tell you the measurement, it's at three, four mil. And then once it's in place, you hook these little tabs on the window and then the bottom groove screw them in and then there's your secure fly net. As you can see then, this window looks absolutely smashing on the inside. It's got the ability to open it and I'm very fortunate in that 
it opens exactly to the point where my cupboard stops. It doesn't actually go much further, so I kind of lucked out there. And then your fly screen frame. So this is designed to line up, hook in that top groove, making sure that rubber's seated really nicely on this left-hand side. Come on, in you go. And my felt's protecting that edge there. And there we go, the window is open, but it has the nice fence screen. And then these clips, they've got a hook on the bottom, if you can see. They slot into the channel there, into place. Grab my Allen screw. There's one. And there we have it. That vent is in there. The window is fully open, or as much as the window can open. Nothing's getting in, nothing's getting out, and that is locked into position. Now, you do have to unscrew the tabs to then close the window, but as something you can use in the night, lock your windows and have ventilation without the risk of anything coming in. Uh, there's a little baggie that's provided. I'd recommend you take these bits out, keep them safe in your little baggie, and then you can lock your window. So with the locking tabs removed on the bottom, you'll notice that it is staying in place. So you can use it as a temporary feature, maybe whilst you're driving, rather than having to get the tabs and locks out. But it's a case of simply removing it, putting it to one side and locking the window. I'm very happy with that. How to replace your window glass in your camper van. And as I said at the beginning, you can use that method of the string or using the flat bladed screwdriver to push the rubber out in any of these windows, the side windows, the windscreen, the back window, and again, that'll apply to bay windows, to Beetles, all manner of older Volkswagens. I think even the Mark II Golf had, Mark I and Mark II Golf had the same style windows. And now you know. Once again, thank you very much to Heritage for helping us out. This is the SSP opening rear quarter glass or rear right glass. as a little safety feature. Don't install one of these on the sliding door side because if you've got a young and hanging his head out the window and you're opening the sliding door, it could lead to uh, something unpleasant. I'll leave that there, shall I? Um, but yes, all of these parts and products are available in the link below. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, the link's down below. And if you did like this video or you want to watch more content like this, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell as well, which will inform you of any videos that we have uploaded. We do lots of lives as well on Sunday evenings that can help you out as a Q&A. Sometimes we're in the workshop, that's good fun. And also, if you've noticed my Campers and Coffee t-shirt, we also run an event called Campers and Coffee down in East Sussex twice a year in the summer and once in the winter. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.